Seven nothing Philadelphia. So pass completions of 16 yards to Fryer and 42 yards to Fryer set up Waters in a three yard touchdown run. It's seven nothing the Eagles. Beautiful view of Veterans Stadium here in Philadelphia with Jerry Glanville, Kevin Harlan. Eagles on top on a Ricky Waters touchdown run. Carolina has squandered two pretty good scoring opportunities. Eagles get it now for a third time. First down and 10 yards to go from the 32. And I think the Eagles have to go back to Ricky Waters. Change the play, switch the formation. Detmer making his third start today, and he goes with the fade on the near side. It's tapped and knocked incomplete. Great defensive play by the former 49er, Eric Davis. We want to show you the last punt with Carolina. Here's the fullback, Chad Cota. Most people don't block the fullback, but with Carolina, he's their best cover guy. See how he's clean? Everybody else is trying to get a block and double the wideouts, and their fullback, their best man, gets a clean shot down. Chad Cota, second-year guy out of Oregon. 58 seconds into the second quarter, 7-0 Philadelphia, second down and 10 for the Eagles. The pitch out the waters, a little cut move, but not much there as he's out to the 33. He picks up a yard, and Les Miller was there with the stop. Right now for McDonald's game break, let's go back to our Fox Television Center in Hollywood. All right, Kevin, Packers have won 10 in a row at Lambeau. Off to a good start here. Dorsey Levins with the one-yard run. Lead it by 10-0 score. By the way, Steve Young will not return to the game for the 49ers. Knocked out with a concussion. Kevin and Jerry. Dorsey Levins seeing more and more time, especially in goal line situations for Green Bay. I wish James would tell us who's playing quarterback for the 49ers right now. Third down and nine from the 33. Pressure on Detmer who throws it away. There really wasn't a receiver in sight, but he was outside that pocket, and because he was outside the pocket, he could throw it away like that with great pressure up the middle by the former Houston Cougar and Houston Oiler, Lamar Latham. And Latham and uh, the quarterback had a little face-to-face -face butt here after the play. Ty Dimmer did not back away. Looked right at him, and they face-butted each other. Let's see. The difference in weight is about <laughs> 50 pounds. The size difference about 6 or 7 inches. Well, Coach Rhodes told me he would not he would not be afraid of anybody. Now they get up. Now they walk over. A little argument gets going here. And now they face-butt each other. Ah, they face-butted each other. Second consecutive punt by the Eagles. Tom Hutton gets it away. Winslow Oliver from the 30-yard line. And Oliver, with some nice weaving and juking, finds himself at the 44 on a 13-yard return after the 37-yard punt by Tom Hutton. Detmer's calling upstairs. His Eagles lead 7 up. Philadelphia will like Ty Dittmer. Watch Latham's helmet. The play's all over. They're going to walk. Bam! Nose on nose. <laughs> Coach Tomey, Coach Rhodes says he will not back away. Ricky Waters compared him the other day to Joe Montana in terms of toughness and build and the way he plays. And there's Latham. But he called him Joe Money. He doesn't yeah. use the word Montana. He says, he reminds me of Joe Money. Carolina with their fourth possession. The handoff goes to Anthony Johnson. He slithers by one oncoming defender and picks up two. James Willis, the former Green Bay backer, makes the stop. Filling in now for the now-departed Kurt Gavea, who goes out to San Diego. And Willis comes in and mans the middle. And Willis is a guy that uh, Coach Rhodes was with at Green Bay. And he got injured at Green Bay, tore a knee, but he knew how tough he was. A guy out of Auburn. You get a linebacker out of Auburn, he's going to run and smack you. That's what this guy is. A guy that got, got injured, got hurt. Now he's healthy, got a chance to play. Two tight ends and second down and eight. And they run up the middle again with Johnson. And Greg Jefferson is up the middle with the stop. As you take a look at Curtis Whitley, who you think is as much of a factor in opening up the room for Johnson as Brockemeyer is on the left tackle. Here's a guy that was at the San Diego Chargers, a backup center behind the all-pro Courtney Hall, and he's not going to get a chance to play. Gets picked up on that expansion draft. Guess what? He's as good as Hall, maybe better. He's as good a center as you can find playing. Eagles put in their nickel package. Third down and six. Three, make it four receivers for Carolina. Collins, good time. Boy, if you've ever seen a coverage play, there it is right there as he coughs it up. They're going to call it a pass. It's incomplete. And William Fuller coming up the middle, the three-time Pro Bowl performer out of North Carolina. Both defenses can get after you, and that's what the Eagles are doing right now. Only a four-man rush. Mamula coming on the corner. And there's William Fuller cutting underneath Mark Dennis. Cut underneath the right tackle. 
got his hands wrapped around the quarterback's legs. Ron Stark will punt 7 nothing Eagles early in the second quarter, and Stark gets off the beauty, angling it to the near side, and it just does go into the end zone. So the Eagles will get it back out at the 20. Time now for our AFLAC trivia question. Who is the last AFL player to intercept the pass? Happened in Super Bowl IV. The answer's coming up. Jerry Glanville, the vet in Philadelphia. Eagles on a three-yard touchdown run by Waters. But Jerry, since then, two consecutive possessions and two consecutive Eagle punts. What they've done is they're running uh, Waters sideways. And I think both teams, again, you've got to take your good back and run straight at it. There's a little... A little fluff there, a little shift. From the 21st and 10, busted play, and Detmer has to go down and loses two on the play. Carlton Bailey jumped on him. And Ricky Waters went the wrong way. The quarterback opened up with the fullback, so the fullback and the quarterback are correct, and Ricky blew it. He's going to open this way and watch Waters come the wrong way. There's Detmer. Where are you? Where are you? Mental air. Turner comes out. Receiver Mark Say goes in. So three Philadelphia receivers on a second down and 12. Short drop back by Dalvos. Picked off on the play by former Colt Dwayne Bickett. He was just that close. Incomplete pass. It'll be third down. Well, the answer to our athletic trivia question of who is the last AFL, American Football League player, to intercept a pass, the answer, current Eagles defensive coordinator Emmett Thomas intercepted a pass for the Kansas City Chiefs in Super Bowl IV right before the two leagues merged. Here he is, and he's sitting right next to Chuck Knox, Jr. Chuck Knox is coach from Seattle and the Rams and Buffalo Bills. His son works with him on the defense. Third down and 12 pass is dropped by Mark Say, and the coverage was applied in the secondary by Toy Cook, the former New Orleans Saint. And third consecutive punt coming up for the Philadelphia Eagles. And Toy Cook used a SWAT technique, which means your left hand hits the ball down towards the field. Get the ball down, watch his left hand, get the ball down. And that's called a SWAT, worked effectively. Get the ball on the ground so nobody can catch it. Another punt coming up for the left-footed Tom Hutton. Third in the NFC coming into today. Oliver deep back. High, good-looking punt. Oliver from the 35-yard line. And knocked out of bounds at the 42-yard line by rookie Ray Farmer. 47-yard punt, 7-yard return. Well, the show that's become a national phenomenon has moved to Sunday nights, and if you're not already a fan, this is the perfect time to get hooked. Don't miss one of the most thrilling X-Files yet tonight. Nine, eight central, right here on the Fox Television Network. That's my son's favorite show. I got a 14-year-old at home, and the X-Files is what those 14-year-olds watch. Here comes Carolina, first down and 10 on their own 42-yard line. Collins going right to work. And he throws, and it's right through the hands of fullback Howard Griffin. Incomplete, second down and 10. That was Collins' third choice. He looked downfield. It was a strong side flood. He looked, he looked, and then he couldn't find what he wanted, and his safety valve was the flare. Watch his eyes. He's looking downfield, looking at the flanker, looking at the tight end. I better get it off. And he throws it over here to his safety valve. Neither offense has done much lately. That's because of the defenses. We're looking at two defenses. I, I like these coaches. They get the defenses warm and chasing. Second down and 10 handoff to Anthony Johnson. Still on his feet. And Anthony Johnson lunges to near midfield. And he picks up seven yards as Brian Dawkins, a rookie from Clemson, brought him down as you see the Packers. On top of Tampa Bay, 10-0. And the Giants have moved on top of the Detroit Lions and St. Louis with the lead. Here's the inside running play with Anthony Johnson. Remember, he's a fullback with quick feet. He has good body lean. Bounces right off a of one linebacker. There's a secondary coming up to hit him. They've got Brian Dawkins, a, a, a free safety. That's a rookie. He's coming after him. Eagles on top, 7 to nothing. One for five today. Carolina on third down. They got third down and two. 
great time for Collins. He throws, and it's broken up beautifully on the play by William Thomas on a pass intended for tight end Wesley Walls. Eric Thomas is a linebacker, but he can intercept. He can intercept as good or better than most defensive backs. He ends up on Wesley Walls, the tight end. Look, he rolls his hips, comes right under that's man-to-man -man underneath with safety help over the top. That's why he can play underneath the play. Thomas had seven picks last year, has two interceptions this year. Ron start the wow. play again. High and hanging under it with the fair catch. Mark Say at the 21-yard line for the Philadelphia Eagles. That's a 29-yard punt, but the hang time was the thing there. Eagles on top. Waters a touchdown run. Next week. Right here, first and ten pass by Collins, looking for the tight end. Walls and a great catch downfield. That's a gain of 15 yards and a first down. And that wasn't a great throw. That throw was a little bit high, but Walls goes up and gets it. Here's the guy from Tupelo, Mississippi. Started at the 49ers, went to the Saints. Watch him go all the way down here, and he goes after the high ball. There he is, breaking on the out cut, and a nice catch. On the 49, first down and 10 yards to go. Anthony Johnson again crawls into Eagle territory, gains two yards to the 49. Ronnie Dixon makes the stop. Eagles again today without Andy Harmon in the middle, but I haven't seen any appreciable difference with him in there or out of there today. Well, both defenses, I think, can, can get by with losing one guy or maybe two guys because they are so good. The talent's so good around. In fact, I asked James Willis, the linebacker, how can you play so good? How can you come in and play good? He says, I'm surrounded by a real good football player. Second down and eight. Collins looks for a secondary receiver. He's on the run. He needs to get to the 41-yard line, and Collins makes a nice little run near the 41. It'll be about a yard shy. Ray Farmer took him out of bounds. Collins looked pretty good for 6-5. Well, that whole scramble was caused by Bobby Taylor. He wanted to throw a fade route to, to his number one receiver, Here's where he wants to throw, but it's full press bumper run. No help. Watch this corner play. Watch Bobby Taylor. He takes that whole thing away, and the quarterback's got to scramble. He was looking for Muhammad. I don't think Muhammad's had a pass thrown to him all day. Moose and Muhammad, the rookie who's been sensational, has been shut out. Anthony Johnson, just 41 yards. Here's his 15th carry, and Anthony Johnson is shut down again. Michael Zordich, along with Ronnie Dixon, make the stop. Our Anthony Johnson, 15 carries, 41 yards on the day. You talk about crowding the line of scrimmage. This was short yardage. You think that this is the deepest guy, and he's going to look everybody one on one. They don't care. They're going to challenge you. Everybody's on the line of scrimmage except one man. That was a 10 man front. Carolina has missed their last seven third down conversions. Upcoming is their fifth consecutive punt by 37-year-old veteran Ron Stark. In fact, they have Mark Say. Say left San Diego, comes to Philadelphia. In fact, the Eagles, as a penalty flag has been thrown against Carolina, so that'll back them up a little bit and give Stark, hopefully, some more room with which to work. Two and a half remaining in the half, 7-0 Philadelphia. We're back after this. Our 10th punt of the game, each by the punters, five to one side, five to the other side. Stark with a little bit of extra room to work with now, and Say calls for and is given the fair catch at the 17-yard line, a 30-yard punt by Ron Stark. Well, Jerry, we saw fireworks in the first two possessions. Carolina marched downfield, got to the Philadelphia 14, lost it on downs, great defense by the Eagles. Ty Detmer led an eight-play, 85-yard drive, Going the other way for Philadelphia. That was capped with a three-yard Ricky Waters touchdown run. Since then, all punt. On stop box. First and ten for Detmer again to the air. This time he's got the receiver, Freddie Solomon. His first NFL reception. It's a gain of 23 yards. He was on the practice squad last year. First year player out of South Carolina State. Well, this is what Detmer can do. He can throw the inside cut. We asked him, favorite route? He said, crossing route. Watch 84. 
Freddie Solomon, no relation to the old Freddie Solomon, and that's what he wants to throw, so I keep calling that rock. Two-minute warning.